The BT-7 was the last tank in the series of Soviet cavalry tanks known as the BT tanks, which were produced in large numbers from 1935 to 1940, succeeding the BT-5. Despite its light armor, the BT-7 was reasonably well armed for its time and was nicknamed Betka. However, the famous T-34 medium tank introduced in 1940 replaced all of the Soviet fast tanks, infantry tanks, and medium tanks then in service. The BT-7 tank had some decent protection due to its well-angled front armor, but its thin armor made it vulnerable to attack, especially on the backside of the turret where the ammo is stored. One of the tank's strengths was its speed, which allowed it to evade enemy fire. The development of the BT-7 was based on the success of the BT light tanks in Soviet service. It had a welded hull, redesigned hull front, and a new engine in the model 1935 version. The tank was redesigned in 1937, with a new conical turret that allowed for more ammunition storage and a machine gun on the rear of the turret. The BT-7 saw combat alongside the BT-5 tanks, and despite its light armor and gasoline engine, it performed well against other countries' tanks due to its mobility and gun performance. Its most notable combat service was against the Japanese at Kalkingol, where it proved very effective against the inferior Japanese armored forces. However, during the opening stages of Operation Barbarossa, the superior German tanks Panzer III and Panzer IV easily took out these lightly armored tanks. Despite this, the Soviets continued to produce and field them among armor and mechanized units to boost their operational capacity. The BT-7 finally saw service again in the Soviet invasion of Japanese-controlled Manchuria, where it proved effective against the more lightly armored Japanese tanks employed. The BT series were all retired after the end of World War II due to their obsolete design as an interwar period tank design.